All right, so um, welcome to Neatly Twisted, where I'll be showing you how to write twisted code that's maintainable. Um, so first of all, a bit about who I am and why you should listen to me. Uh, who I am? My name is Josh Bartlett. I work for a company called Netbox Blue, and 99% of my job is writing and maintaining Python code. Now, to give you an idea, oh, sure, that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Um, to give you an idea of um, uh, Netbox Blue's involvement with Python, uh, there are around 400,000 lines of Python code in our code base, um, and some of this code was written in 99 for Python 1.5.2. Um, so Netbox Blue has been doing Python for a long time. I haven't been personally programming in Python quite as long as Netbox Blue has been. Um, but Python is my language of choice, and as well as using it for my paid employment, I use it for a number of hobby projects. One of those is, um, as mentioned, the uh, network game, open source network game called Trosnoth. So little stick figures running around shooting each other, capturing territory. Um, this is written using Python, uses Pygame for the graphics, uh, uses Twisted for all of its networking, asynchronous stuff. Uh, do we have any core C Python developers here? in this room? OK, so I'm not a core CPython developer. The closest I've come to it was, as mentioned, identifying a bug in the CPython uh, interpreter. I don't know about you. When you find something that you don't quite understand, that it's not working the way that you expect, you don't think it's a bug in Python. You, you think that you don't understand it, right? But it turns out it was a bug in Python, so I posted a bug to the bug tracker. Within 24 hours of me posting the bug, um, there was a commit uh, that Fix, fix the problem, or so the committer thought. Within another 24 hours, there was this message here. After this commit, the build bots are dying randomly with seg faults. Um, <laughs> this was my favorite, favorite message of the, um, uh, of the whole affair. But that has been fixed since, and that will be in the next version of Python 2.7, and that's in Python 3.3. Um, so I'm, yes, I identified a bug that's been fixed. Um, away from my mouth. Is that better? All right, so, um, but enough about me. Uh, about you, here are your options. A, are you a Twisted contributor? B, have you used Twisted extensively? C, have you used Twisted a little bit? Uh, D, have you heard of Twisted before but never actually used it? Um, e, you didn't go to the other talk because it said noobs in the title? Or uh, D, you thought that Richard Jones was speaking in this room? Uh, hands up for A, any Twisted contributors here? Excellent, I'm off the hook on that one. Uh, Hands up anyone who's used Twisted extensively. OK, so we've got a few people. So if I say anything wrong, feel free to pick me up on that. Uh, used Twisted a bit. All right. Heard of Twisted, but never really used it. Most of the room. Uh, anyone for E? Yep, OK. Anyone for F? Oh, wow, two people. Um, so Richard Jones is actually speaking in the Portlight Bar. So we're going to stare at you as you stand up and head over there. Uh, that's very condescending of you. Um, <laughs> so, um, so this is my plan. Uh, I'm going to talk about what Twisted is, and hopefully in the process you will see why Twisted is so awesome. Um, then I'll give you some uh, stories about when Twisted can be a bit scary, um, and then I'll give you three tips to keep your Twisted code awesome, uh, help you with debugging there, and in the process I'll do a bit of a comparison between coding for Twisted and coding if you were doing threading, um, just to give you an idea of what the differences are there. Um, that's a lot to try and fit in, so hopefully I'll cover enough to give you the general idea, um, but I will have some time for questions at the end, so we'll um, uh, yeah, see which bits I didn't get right. So straight from the Twisted website, what is Twisted? Twist is an event-driven networking engine written in Python. Now, I'm assuming that you're all down with the Python bit by this stage. So bend it away from my face. Is that all right? So um, I'll talk about uh, Twisted as an event-driven engine and uh, the networking side of Twisted. So first of all, Twisted is a networking, uh, networking engine. So straight out of the box, Twisted comes with a billion and one protocols, network protocols, that just work. Um, so as well as that, they, it comes with uh, building blocks to build your own line-based or length-prefixed or uh, datagram-based or whatever, whatever protocols you want, to, um, you want to write. So I've listed some of the protocols that um, Twisted supports up on the board. I couldn't fit them all on the slide. Um, those are some of them. Um, for instance, uh, earlier this year, I had to work on 
a daemon. Now, how many of you have come across the Postfix open source mail server? A fair few of you, right. So what this daemon had to do is it had to talk to Postfix on a Postfix-specific protocol, address resolver protocol. So Postfix would say, uh, here's an email address, which server should I send it to? And the daemon would say, oh, uh, that email address, you need to connect to Google's server to send that email address on. Um, and now this daemon actually had to listen on two different ports doing talking in this protocol for slightly different purposes. Had to listen on a third port acting as a rudimentary SMTP server, and it also had to do uh, recipient address verifi verification checks, which means acting as an SMTP client. Um, what you can see from the slide is that, oh, from the slide is that Twisted supports SMTP right out of the box. What you can't see from the slide, but is true nonetheless, is that Twisted also supports that postfix specific address resolver protocol right out of the box. Turns out writing that daemon was quite straightforward. Um, so one of the huge advantages of Twisted is this, you get lots of network protocols for free. Um, to give you an idea, a bit of a taste for the flavour of using Twisted to do networking code, this is an example of the uh, Twisted website homepage. So if you wanted to write an echo server, server is going to sit there, listen for connections, accept them, whatever data it receives it will send it straight back. First of all you have to, in your main, create a, an echo factory and tell it to listen. To create the echo factory, you find the twisted building block you want, subclass it, and you say, every time I receive a connection, this build protocol will be called, I want you to build a, an echo object there for each new connection that you receive. So if you get five connections to your server, you'll have five echo objects. Each of those can then store state for that connection, except that this is an echo server, so you don't actually care about state, so all your echo class has to do is say, when I receive data, I write it back out. Um, so fairly straightforward, the general principle is find the twisted building block that you want, subclass it, override the bits that you want. This is generally how most of your networking side of Twisted will work. Another example, again from the Twisted homepage, uh, web resource. You find the twisted building block you want here, resource.resource .resource from twisted.web. You override it, you say, this is how you render a get. In this case, we're doing a counter, setting the content type, writing something out containing the counter. Your main function then just has to create the resource, create a site with that resource at the root, and run the reactor. Um, so again, the same concept, find the twisted building block you want, subclass it, um, and override the things that you want to change. All right, so that's twisted uh, networking. But a huge part of Twisted is the event-driven side of things. And so Twisted is an asynchronous event framework, um, which means that you're not relying on multi-threading to do your multiple, um, threads of ex your multiple tasks of execution. I won't call them threads since they're not threads. You can still use threads in Twisted, I'll touch on that in a little bit. Um, but y it's important to understand the async side of what Twisted does. So at the core of Twisted's um, asynchronous model is this thing called a deferred. A deferred just represents something that hasn't necessarily yet finished. So in this example here, um, this get page, get page function here is used to connect to a website uh, and read the contents of a web page. So if you call get page with a website, you will get a deferred object back. Something that hasn't necessarily finished. And that, when you call get page, you'll get that back pretty much instantly. It hasn't yet connected to the server. It hasn't yet read the page. You've got the deferred object. And you can say, OK, when you do get this page, add this callback. This is going to happen. Or you can say, uh, add this error back, which is the twisted word for if an error occurs, run this function. Um, so fundamentally, behind the scenes, twisted stuff is basically a bunch of these short snippets of code linked together by these callbacks. Um, which is all well and good, except that when you have a bunch of short snippets of code linked together by callbacks, things can get very messy very quickly. For instance, earlier this year, um, I had to debug a particular issue. Now, Netbox Blue has a product that acts uh, as a gateway device and can have multiple links, multiple upstream internet links. So, um, for instance, it could have uh, an Ethernet 
uh, DHCP over Ethernet upstream link, a uh, PPP over Ethernet upstream link, it might be load balancing 80% across one, 20% across the other, but if both come down, it needs to fail over to a 3G connection. Um, so there's a daemon running on this device, written in, Twisted, in Python using Twisted, that's responsible for uh, monitoring all these links. If one of them comes down, it needs to um, repeatedly try to bring it back up over, over periods of time um, so that when it can come up, it will come back up, the system doesn't fail. Now what had happened was that for one of these links on one particular customer's side, the link had come down, the daemon was not trying to bring it back up. So, had a situation, live site, my job was first, gather as much diagnostic information as I could, as quickly as I could, about the problem, because I had to restart that service so that it would start working again. Then my task was to sit down with the code here and the logs here, try and figure out what code path on earth had this code followed to get in this state that it was never supposed to get into. So, after a while, I got out my pen and my paper, a few different coloured pens, and started drawing diagrams. This is actually a scan of my notepad. I'm drawing diagrams to try and follow all the callbacks that could have happened, all the possible exception paths and the possible uh, deferred failure paths, try and figure out what it had, it had done to get in this state. And eventually, I finally came up with something, uh, found a bug that I thought explained the situation. So I fixed that. A about a week later, I actually decided that, that bug didn't quite explain all of the logs. I went back and drew some more diagrams and uh, found another bug. So hopefully I've convinced you that it's important when you're writing twisted code uh, to do things right so that you don't end up with messy code. If you have messy code that's not readable, that's not maintainable. If someone has to spend two hours sitting down drawing diagrams to figure out what went wrong, um, then you, you've got an issue on your hands. Ideally, someone should be able to look at the code and see all the possible code paths there. Um, readable code is maintainable code. So, three tips. Tip number one. Uh, so, before I, before I give you tip number one, I'm going to give you a contrived example. I'll be using this example code. This, so, this is not using Twisted, not using threads, just doing a task. The reason I'm showing you this example is because I'll be in a minute showing you how to do it with Twisted, and then a bit later showing you what it would look like dealing with that with threading. Um, so I'll just step through this. Basically, you've got a bunch of URLs, popping them out, and uh, here you're doing a URL open of, of that URL with some argument. You're doing this sequentially, so you've got a loop over these. Uh, you're doing some exception handling where you're logging errors and continuing on your merry way. Now, let me just explain why I've given you this example. First of all, I want to demonstrate loops. Secondly, I want to demonstrate exception handling. Thirdly, I've got this parameter in here, this total equals blah passed to the web page. That's just so I have some reason why you have to do these web requests one after the other. Um, if, if you were able to fire off these web requests all at once, it would be a very different example, not what I wanted to demonstrate today. Um, in reality, there are lots of situations where you want to do tasks that might block on I.O. or whatever, one after the other. Um, and so that's what I wanted to demonstrate here. So, um, tip number one is use this inline callbacks decorator in Twisted whenever you can. That is, whenever you have a sequential step of things. Um, so basically, this code is the Twisted version. So you want to be able to do that, those web gets while you're running in the Twisted Reactor so that the Twisted Reactor can be doing other stuff in the background. It can be emailing your mother, it can be uh, rendering the Mandelbrot set, whatever it's doing, you don't want to block it with that URL lib open. So, um, the difference here. You have this get page function which gets the page. What you need to know when you're writing or reading Twisted functions that use the inline callbacks decorator is, um, Anywhere you see the yield, this is interrupting the function, returning control to the twisted reactor, and saying, wait until this deferred finishes. So get page returns a deferred. The yield says to the twisted reactor, once this page load is finished, wake me up. Until then, the twisted reactor can do whatever it wants. When it's finished, you get the page. All the rest of the code is the same, except this final line where we were returning the total. Um, this is the only reason that this is different is because in Python syntax, you can't have a return of a value in a function that has a yield until Python 
When Python 3.3 comes along, you can do that. But in the meantime, we have to resort to using defer.return value instead of return. Can you please build back and forth? Yes, okay, so this is, this is the previous slide. So the differences are here. URL lib open, we've replaced with get page and a yield. Down here, we were returning a total. I'll just flick forward now. Uh, sorry about those sizes being different. I didn't realize that when I was making it. Um, here you've got yield get page. Here you've got defer.return value. All right, fairly straightforward, fairly readable. Now, I think it's not beyond the realm of comprehension that some of you are looking at this code thinking, hold on a second, page equals yield? Is that even possible? Um, is that even valid syntax? Is there anyone thinking that? A few, two or three. Um, uh, I can right now demonstrate that syntax, um, but if everyone here, almost everyone here knows that syntax already, um, it may be a waste of my time. So uh, hands up if you would like me to go through demonstrating that syntax. We have a few people, I think that's, we have, okay, we have more people than said that put up their hands before, so we'll demonstrate that. Um, all right, so, uh, that one, terminal. So, um, you're probably familiar with um, being able to define a generator, yield x, yield x plus one, yield two times x, um, and then you can say four, i in foo, 7, uh, print i. So where you see the yields, this is now being um, returned out following the iterator protocol. Probably familiar with that. Um, I can actually get the generator object and iterate through it. Uh, that's the generator object. Iterate through it using the iterator protocol manually. Get the same results. When I hit the end, it raises stop iteration. So you've probably seen that. Um, what you probably haven't seen is uh, uh, something like this, where you are uh, having something equals yield something. So here we'll yield a y plus 1. Here we'll yield 2 times z and throw away the result. Um, again, you can create a bar object. That's a generator, just like before. When we look at the generator, though, as well as this next function that I was calling, we also have this thing called send behaves similar to, to next. So the first thing I'll do is I'll send in a none. This gets the ball rolling, runs the generator until it hits the first yield. So I passed in 7 as x. It's yielding out the 7. That's what I get down here. And um, now it's interrupted on that yield statement. Now what I can do is I can send in something else. So I'm going to send in a 2. So what it's done is it's sent in that 2 as the result of the yield, stored that in y and then yielded y plus 1, which is 3 here. And it's now interrupted on this yield. All right? Again, I can send something else in. Send 21. Uh, so that's stored in z. Yielded 2 times z. Got 42 out. It's interrupted on this one. I can send anything I like in now because I'm discarding the result here. I'm not assigning it to anything. Um, and it'll fall out the bottom of the function, raise stop iteration, as next does. Um, you also probably saw this uh, throw function method here. Uh, let me demonstrate that. Baz try uh, yield ready, accept exception, and we will print something out. And we will create a Baz. Um, all right, so what I'll do is, as before, I'll send in none to get the ball rolling. So it's now yielded ready. It's interrupted on this statement. What I can do now is I can do g.throw. Um, I can throw in a value error, for example, and that's the error I'm going to throw in. You can actually throw in a, um, you can actually throw in a traceback with that, but I'm not doing that right now because creating a traceback object is just a bit messy. All right, so what we've got here, we've got yikes. It's printed. It's printed the string of the exception, which is your house is on fire. It's fallen out the end of the function, and it's raised stop iteration. Um, so as this is a syntax feature of Python as of Python 2.5, as of Python 2.5, you can have these generators that talk in both directions. Um, and that's the syntax feature that Twisted is, uh, taking, advan uh, Twisted is taking advantage of here. Um, and what that means is that if there is an error during the get page, whether that's an exception or a, deferred a failed deferred, this yield will... Um, it will look to the function, to the calling function, as if this yield raised an exception. 
And so you can catch it using a normal accept, whether it's a, deferred, a failed deferred or an exception object. Um, so um, I've just shown you how that works, but I haven't yet explained to you why you should use inline callbacks. So why you should use inline callbacks? Because if you do not, I will hunt you down and kill you. <laughs> um, or probably more accurately, whoever has to maintain your code will hunt you down and kill you. That may even be a future you. Um, so, uh, for example, if I was writing this code using straight deferreds without um, inline callbacks, it would look like this. So here we have the base case. We're returning the total if the URL is empty. We're popping a URL out. We're using maybe deferred to catch whether it's an exception or a failure so that both of them do the same thing. Um, we are doing, uh, adding the callbacks here with the correct args. We're defining the callbacks down the bottom here. And then we have to add the callback of begin again to do the loops so that it's doing it iteratively so that we can do that function. So this is why you use inline callbacks for anything that's sequential, um, sequential code. It makes it much more readable, much more maintainable. Um, all right, so this is a good point in time for me to do a brief comparison between twisted and threading. Twisted is doing here what you see with the yields. Uh, it's doing what's called cooperative multitasking. What this means is that the twisted reactor is never going to turn around and say to the running task, you've had enough time. Stop there, it's your turn to run. That's what, that's what the scheduler will do with, with um, threading. It will say to that thread, you've had enough, it's your turn. The twisted reactor will always allow the current task to run until the task either says, OK, I'm finished, or it says, uh, wake me up when this happens. Um, and what that means is that in twisted, if your task is malicious, it can hold up the whole rest of your main process. If your task never says, wake me up, if your task calls you are a lib open, if your task calls sleep 100, the reactor is never getting control back. It can never do um, schedule anything else to happen. It will never email your mother or render that Mandelbrot set or calculate the digit of pi or whatever you're doing in the background. Um, however, the advantage is that, uh, that with um, threading, your code may be interrupted at any time, even inside one of your function calls. Whereas with uh, Twisted, you know exactly where that code can be interrupted. It's those yield functions. Where that yield is, is where you can be interrupted. So this is the original code I showed you before. Um, if you were doing this with, twist, uh, with threading, you'd have to look through this and say, uh, OK, this is not thread safe. Something could interrupt me between checking self.urls and popping from it. We'll have to do something about that. We'll do a tr while true, do a try accept, and as long as we know that the pop is atomic, that's good enough. Or if we don't know that URLs is something with an atomic pop, we'll have to make sure we find a thread safe library. Um, we might also need to do, at the bottom here, I've got some sort of lock. We're calling an external function. You probably know what the function does. You probably know whether it needs a lock or not. So that's the sort of concern that you have when you're doing threading. When am I going to be interrupted? With twisted, you've got the opposite concern. Um, and what that concern is, is basically, um, uh, don't, is, am I going to block the reactor? And so that's my second tip, don't block the reactor. And here's how. First of all, if you're doing anything with uh, I.O. calls, if you're doing anything with timing, basically if you're doing anything which would normally be long running, you need to find the twisted alternative to the standard library. Um, so use get page instead of URL lib open. Uh, use uh, call reactor.call later instead of using time.sleep. The other thing is that if you do have a computation, a CPU intensive task like a JSON decode, um, this is actually something that you can farm off to a thread in Twisted. So Twisted has a defer to thread or defer to thread pool function. And what that will do is you say, run this function in a thread pool with these args. Make sure it's something that's not using any shared resources, something like a simple JSON load s. Um, particularly in that case, because the C library it doesn't hold up the gill, um, and you get a deferred object. As far as you're concerned, you've got a deferred, um, and once that finishes, it will fire the same as any other deferred. So if you've got computation-intensive code, you do that. Um, tip three, manhole. So what I've got up here is some magic code. Um, in Twisted, a manhole is basically a Python prompt running inside your interpreter. Uh, so inside your running Twisted application. So you can connect in, debug your application live. 
Um, now, I'm just about out of time, so what I can either do is I can either have questions or I can demonstrate this manhole using Trosnoth. <laughs> Maybe if I demo it, I can still have time for one question. I'm not sure what's the time constraints here. I've got five minutes with which to... Right, I'll do a quick demo, and then any minutes left we have, um, we'll, we'll do that for questions. So, um, so what I have over here, hopefully, is... Hopefully, somewhere... That's the wrong one. <laughs> this will take... That's on the wrong desktop. Okay, so I have a Trosnoth server here. You'll have to tr trust me on this, and I've got a manhole into it here. So, um, what I'll do is I will just open a new terminal here. Uh, oh, there it is. Uh, run Trosnoth for you in the foreground. So, this is Trosnoth. I'm going to play on localhost. Come on, localhost. Username. Hang on, is that... That's not localhost. That's actually connecting to a web server. Let's play on localhost. Okay, using a test account. Okay, so here's me. I'm a stick figure. I'm running around. That's all good. In my manhole over here, I'm going to uh, get the game object. I'm going to get a player object with the username of test. Okay, I've got a player object here. And now, okay, I'm not having much fun here. Where's my enemies? There are a few bots in here. Okay, there's an enemy. Not very good. Um, I win. All right, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself an upgrade. I think I need a shield. Oh, look, I've got a shield now. Oh, no, he shot my shield. Oh, um, oh look, he killed me. Oh, well, look, respawn. Oh, look at that. <laughs> um, okay, and uh, just for one more, you can e I can even give myself an upgrade that doesn't, isn't even possible to get in the game. Let's give myself this upgrade. Oh, look, now I'm a ninja with a ricochet machine gun and a shield. <laughs> look at that. So, um, typically I'm suggesting you use Manhold to uh, debug applications that are broken by connecting in and accessing them, um, but I'm just using it for a bit of fun here. Okay, so um, that's me. Any questions? Uh, just a quick one about testing. How do you test huh. this stuff? All right. There's a few different options here. So, um, first of all, Twisted actually comes with a, an asynchronous test, um, uh, test running system called Trial. Um, and that's how Twisted writes their own tests. Um, and that is how uh, a lot of people that use Twisted will test their stuff. It's designed to test asynchronous stuff. It basically automatically mocks out all the timing stuff for you. Um, so that you can write code that even though it's testing that it should be waiting for 10 seconds and doing something, it still runs instantly because you've mocked out the timer. Um, so trial is a really good option there. Um, but it's also possible by looking at the trial source code um, to find ways of using the similar sorts of things in other test frameworks. For example, uh, at Netbox Blue, um, we write, I don't know if any of you went to the PyTest Funcargs talk, um, we have a Funcarg that we use in PyTest that is basically a twisted thing. You call, you have the twisted funk arg, you call twisted.waitDeferred, and that will wait till the deferred finishes and assert that the reactor is clean at the end, that there's no other waiting deferreds. Um, so, and the code for that is about 10, 15 lines of code to get that as a funk arg in PyTest. So by, by looking at the way that trial does it, you can, um, you can test things like that. Um, so, um, in, I'm used to, in JavaScript, with asynchronous programming, having uh, missing bits of traceback because it doesn't... So, so does the yield syntax fix that issue? Um, the yield syntax um, can fix that issue, but is not fi that is not fixed in the, mo in the latest released version. So um, that's, that's the biggest complaint about the yield syntax in inline callbacks, is that your tracebacks only basically show you two levels of, of yielded stack mm -hmm. um, and don't show you the rest of it. Um, I submitted a patch a week ago that fixed that. I've never submitted to the Twisted code base before, but I was frustrated. Um, right. And Glyph, who's the creator of Twisted, his reaction was, 
uh, his first reaction was, wow, and I wasn't quite sure how to read that, so I said, oh, do you think that's a bit evil? And he said, hell yes, it's evil, um, but that's, I think his words were, that's freaking cool, I want it. So I've submitted that to Twisted Now, and hopefully cool. they'll put that in. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of Five Honest...